The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. I could not help but think of my nephew, who, if born premature, might have died that day as well. She seemed to be alone before the Congressional Human Rights Caucus, identified only as a Kuwaiti escapee. But we've discovered she wasn't alone at all. And she wasn't just a simple Kuwaiti escapee. In fact, just a few seats away was her father, Kuwait's ambassador to the United States and Canada. If it became known that um, it was somebody who was closely associated with obviously putting across a Kuwaiti government position at a particular time when public opinion was very sensitively balanced in the United States at least about whether or not one should be going to war, it was, it was an evenly balanced issue, then it could well have tipped the balance one way that, that this was an entire show that was being arranged. When I asked the engineer, one of the engineers, about the story, and he told me that uh, they should not have had such a story because if the world had known about it later on, it would have come back to haunt them. These are some of the controversial incubators. When the Iraqi occupiers heard the story that they'd stolen them and killed babies in the process, they invited journalists into Kuwait hospitals to see for themselves. But the story persisted. But what the world didn't know at the time was that the witnesses appearing before the Congressional Human Rights Caucus that day were carefully coached by Hill and Knowlton. There was training with these individuals to help them get more comfortable with the setting, the circumstances, the questions, so that they could focus on their story. You know, that was clearly one of the roles that, uh, that Hill and Knowlton was able to help them with. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. No president should fear public scrutiny of his program. For from that scrutiny comes understanding, and from that understanding comes support or opposition, and both are necessary. 
I am not asking your newspapers to support an administration, but I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. For I have complete confidence <laughs> in the response and dedication of our citizens whenever they are fully informed. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. A world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be. When we are successful, and we will be. When we are successful, and we will be. We have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders.
Certain that we stand at a defining hour. We are Americans, part of something larger than ourselves. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause. To achieve the universal aspirations of mankind, peace and security, Freedom, such is a world worthy of our struggle and worthy of our children's future. You know, we're here today to talk uh, about taxes, something that uh, everybody obviously cares deeply about. And I've often said that our biggest challenge right now uh, isn't just to reclaim all the jobs that we lost to the recession. It's to reclaim the security that so many middle class Americans have lost over the past decade. Our core mission as an administration and as a country uh, has to be, yes, putting people back to work, uh, but also rebuilding an economy where that work pays off. An economy in which everybody can have the confidence that if you work hard, you can get ahead. We've got these huge deficits, and everybody agrees that we need to do something about these deficits and these debts. So we can't afford to keep that up, not right now. So I'm not proposing anything radical here. And that's why I'm calling on Congress to extend the tax cuts for the 98 percent of Americans for another year. Speaking of deals, even if one is struck to avert the fiscal cliff, taxes are still going up, and that means for you too. You know what we're talking about here? There was an interesting component of the president's deal to John Boehner yesterday. Tell us about that. Well, the president in his latest offer dropped a uh, provision that he had been pushing for, an extension of his payroll tax cut that has been in place for two years. This lowers uh, the payroll tax by two percentage points, which uh, is significant across the economy because it affects every wage earner in the country. So almost every American is affected by this year. And this is actually really important, both economically and politically. We went through an entire campaign with uh, lawmakers on both sides of the aisle saying uh, that 
th this, this uh, uh, fiscal cliff issue would not affect middle income taxpayer. But uh, this payroll tax cut is now going to lapse at the end of the year, and the Obama administration seems willing to drop it in the name of compromise, but that's going to actually weigh on the economy. Of course, you have to draw the line somewhere, and you have to decide at some point uh, to cut this back. The bigger problem, though, is if people haven't been prepared for it, it could be a shock earlier in the year when they start getting those paychecks.